Maybe to you that was just noise, and for some, maybe therein lies its beauty. Or perhaps it sets the scene for a cautionary journey into the underbelly of a not too distant future, high tech, low life dystopian megacity. Welcome to Jamie TV, and thank you for tuning in. I guess my point is, noises is possibly not for everyone, but this collaboration between experimental composer Heimbach, cardigan wearer and owner of the Leaning Tower of Sound Test Equipment, an audio thing is excellent both in its concept and execution, so much so that I really wanted to do a video on it, even though I'm really behind the door here. I mean, there's already a lot of tutorials on YouTube on how to use it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna give you an overview of how it works, and then I'm gonna give you some tips on how you might include it in your project. If I click in this window up here, I can select a preset, which will load up both a set of parameters for the dials in the app, and an associated bank of samples. I can save a new preset here, delete one that sucks here, or generate a random one here. In the bank window, I can select a different bank of samples without changing any of the app's parameters. If I want to learn about how Heimbach created those sounds, I click here for info. The cogwheel to the right gives me that info again, plus the ability to preview a sample. Download one, or delete a pants one. I can delete a bank here, or create my own bank with this plus icon. And as well as adding samples, I can add a description and image. Think of the eight samples as being loaded to these eight square yellow buttons. I can use the big fat dial to sweep across those samples, which can be deactivated by pressing on the relevant button. The trip button will automate the dial's movement. To switch that movement from pendulum to random, we press here. The speed of the trip is adjusted here. And I'll bring up fuzzy so you can just see what that does. Trigger switches noises on and off. And we also have attack and release to adjust how quickly it kicks in when you switch it on and how long it takes to shut up. If I move this button over to host, then noises will start when I press play in the host. We can then sync the speed of noises to the host by pressing here. And now the speed button moves in increments relating to the tempo set by the host. We've got a volume here, post effects gain here, and this control will change the pitch of the samples. I'll switch on the filter here, select a different type of filter in this window, and of course, we can play with the cutoff and resonance. And to really dirty things up, we can downsample things with this crusher, change the bit rate, and blend that effect into the mix. And we can even change the order of the filter and crusher effects in the signal path. You will have noticed by now that we don't need to feed MIDI notes into noises to make it play. It plays with itself. But let's say you want to start it and stop it in an AUM jam. Let's go to the slidey knob icon in AUM and click here where we select what input source do we want noises to listen to. I'm going to choose the AUM keyboard, but it could be any controller you have attached to your iPad. Then we scoot down the exposed parameters to trigger, MIDI learn, 
and I'll press C2. Now I can press C2 to start and stop noises in my next AUM jam session. If I just pop back to here, just imagine what an awesome jam you could have by mapping an external controller to more of these parameters. Now if I go up to the menu, global settings, pitch unit, semitones, MIDI input, MIDI to pitch, then we'll go and map the AUM keyboard to noises. Now just watch the pitch control as I play the on-screen keyboard. Noises will also accept MIDI notes from a piano roll to switch it on and off, as I've done here with Helium in this unfinished piece. If I visit the slidey knob button again, you'll see that I've got Helium selected up here, and right at the bottom, I've mapped Bypass this time instead of Trigger. MIDI channel 4, because this is MIDI channel 4, to the note C-1. This note switched noises on in this piece, and this one will bypass it again. Let's use Cubasis 3 for a while, and let's send the resonance of the filter on a little self-automated trip by moving this little knob. And let's do the same thing with the filter here. Ok, now if I want noises to kick in at a certain point during a project, and drop out at a specific point too, we want to use automation in Cubasis 3 to switch the trigger on and off. The quickest and easiest way to do this is just to activate read and write automation. Press play, and then just switch the trigger button on and off just anywhere. Then we can come out of noises and go to automation. Click where we can see our door has recorded this automation. Now I'm going to click on snap to bar and move trigger on to the beginning of bar 10, and off at the beginning of bar 16. Let's now switch off right, and we'll see the automation in action. In Logic Pro for iPad, I've used exactly the same automation principle to switch noises on and off as I used in Cubasis 3, which you can see here. But here's an interesting quirk I found. At this point in the track, I have a tempo change where the tempo decreases over two bars. This makes noises go a little mental in a way that I really like. I added to this some automation to make the noises pitch control go wild at this point and I ended up with this. Ok, now let's hear that in the track, a work in progress which is tentatively titled Brain Potato. Speaking of the pitch control, some sounds in noises are more musical than others. This sound 
cause me some problems later on in the track. It was only playing in the background, but it was making everything sound out of tune. So I used the pitch control in noises to tune it to the rest of the instrumentation by ear. I realise that not everyone would be comfortable with doing this, but here's a solution for Logic Pro for iPad. Select the track you're using for noises. Click on this button at the bottom so you can see your chain of apps and effects. Add audio effects. Scroll down to audio units. Nambrini Audio and add their free and most excellent tuner. Click on it and drag up. These buttons here will let you toggle between noises and the tuner. Now you can tune in noises with the pitch control and keep checking the tuner. A sound like this is likely to dance around the green a little, but it should certainly work. To import my own bank of samples, I'm going to go to my Files app, and in here I've got a folder with eight xylophone samples in C major. I'll press Select and Select All, because noises can load eight samples. Then I go to More and Compress. Let's rename the compressed file. Now I'll go to Noises and in the menu Import Bank. You navigate to the compressed file and let us check in the banks. We'll select the imported samples and now I'll have a pissy pants around. And now I've found some settings I like, I'll go up here and save my preset. To add a bank of samples for the desktop version of Noises, I'll go to the menu, Global Settings, Banks Path, and Open Banks Folder, Noises, and I'll drag in this folder containing eight samples from my desktop. Now we go back to Noises and press reload. Check in banks and there it is. Let's load up the samples and now I'll have a pissy pants around with it. Something I almost forgot to show you, hover over a yellow pad and you'll see a control for the volume of the sample and one for the pitch. Right. I've got something that I think I'm happy with, so I'll save the preset. Now I'm going to need noises to switch on and off at certain points during this track. So I'll activate read and write automation, press play, and I'll just switch noises on and off, and you'll see Cubase has added an automation lane and labelled it trigger. I'm just going to zoom in and move these on and off points to where I think I want them to be for now and I'll switch off right. If you're still watching at this point, well done. 
I can only presume that you're very interested in purchasing noises, so let me just say I do very highly recommend it. Or perhaps you've already bought it and you were just looking for some maybe use case examples, some tips and whatnot, in which case, let me just say I, I hope that this video has achieved something approaching like what I intended it to be when I started out. I could have said that better, but anyway, observations about noises from me. Anything that comes from the mind of Heimbach is going to be very inspired, very interesting. And in this case, it certainly has resulted in a fascinating and unique app. And anything made by AudioThing is going to be rock solid. But the samples that it comes with are very Heimbach-y. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love Heimbach stuff. But it occurs to me that if you import your own sounds, you could use it for a much greater, wider variety of stuff than it might first appear. So if you do already have it, let me know in the comments below this video. What kind of sounds have you imported? What kind of music are you making with it? I'm just really interested. I'm not trying to get more traction on my video. I just really am fascinated. And speaking of that, if you do buy this software and you have any issues with it whatsoever, anything you're not sure about, my contact information is down below the video. Get in touch with me, I will help you. And in fact, anything music related or anything you like at all, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm down there. Stop me on social media. All my links are there. Now, what else about noises? The iOS version is identical to the desktop version. There is no difference other than in the menu system, just because of the way that the different devices handle files. And that's it. And yet there's quite a difference in the price. So that makes it a very interesting piece of software to bring up in forums when we're arguing about the current iOS music pricing crisis. Uh, other things, I do have to have a criticism because I'm a YouTuber, I have to pick on something. The only thing I can think of is on the iOS version, it would be very nice if you could, when you're building a bank of samples of your own one at a time, it'd be nice if you could drag and drop with your finger, and pop it in like that, that would be cool. Actually, you know, I found that the iOS version of Noises is actually more enjoyable to use than the desktop version. There's nothing wrong with the desktop version, but it's a nice piece of software to get your fingers into, you know, big knobs, uh, a lot of fun. And also because all the parameters are exposed in AUM, it's very, very easy to map a controller to it. Easy as putting on a hat, get stuck in there and just have a great time making noises with it. There's nothing really on desktop that makes that sort of thing as easy as that, as far as I'm aware. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful. I've had loads of fun with this software. I've really, really enjoyed it. I'm sure that is apparent. If you would like to help out this channel in any way, all my links are down below the video. My music, my merchandise, my website, and my Patreon, which really is my preferred way if you'd like to do anything to help support what I do here. Until my next video, take care of yourselves, make lots of music, be good people, be kind, look after the planet and don't pissy pants about. See you later.